Hi there, welcome back to A Slice of Physics. We're now going to discuss resistance of a bulb compared to the resistance of the connecting wires and talk about the power and efficiencies of standard light bulbs. We will first look at a comparison of resistances of the bulbs in the connecting wire with an aim to testing the approximation we mentioned in the previous video that the connecting wires can be thought of to have zero resistance. Then we'll look at the power dissipated by a typical incandescent bulb mention how hot the filament gets and how efficient these bulbs are. Let's take this example of a bulb connected to a battery by some connecting wires. Let's say this battery is a 6 volt battery, so that's what its EMF is or potential difference across its ends is. Here's our positive end, here's our negative end, and so the current direction would be like that. First we will compare the resistances of the connecting wires that's the segment of the circuit between the positive end of the battery and this point A just before entering the bulb and also from point B after leaving the bulb to the negative end we'll see what the combined resistance of these connecting wires is and how that compares to the resistance of the bulb itself then we'll talk about the power dissipated by the bulb let's first take a look at the bulb and see what its resistance would be to do that, we got to take a closer look at how the bulb is made. And I'm going to zoom in here and show you that a bulb has this glass dome. It's got the connectors and it's got really two connectors here. One is the side wall, which is connected to one end of the circuit and the other end is connected to this bottom part. And these two are shielded from each other in such a way that the wire continues here into the filament of the bulb and comes back down here this way. So if we say that this is point A over here and this is point B over here that we talked about, the current goes in this direction. So the current goes from the positive end of the battery in the connecting wires into the bulb through the filament back out at B and through the connecting wires to the negative end. So what's inside the bulb is also a wire, but it's got different properties than the connecting wire itself. The filament in the bulb is a very thin and very long wire made of a special material. That material typically is tungsten, which is the chemical element W. The reason we choose tungsten is because of its properties of being very strong when it's very thin, and secondly, it's got a very high melting temperature, and we'll see that these bulbs get really hot, the filaments in the bulbs get really hot, and we don't want the wire to melt. And so tungsten, when it gets hot, has a rho or resistivity of about 5.0 times 10 to the negative 7 ohm meter. The length of the wire inside the bulb, shockingly, is about 2 meters. 2 meters is almost 7 feet. And you'd wonder how seven feet of length can be put into the, a little light bulb. And when you look closely at a filament, it's not only coiled like I showed here, but the entire filament is coiled throughout this thing. So it's a double coil. And by doing that, we're able to compress a lot of length into a very small dome. And it's also very thin. And typical diameter of this wire would be about half a millimeter which gives me a radius of 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4 meters when I do that unit conversion. So we have all the requirements to figure out the resistance of this bulb, so let's go ahead and do that. Resistance is rho times L over A. The cross-section area in this case is just pi times this R squared. So this would be 5.0 times 10 to the negative 7 times the length, which is 2 meters divided by cross-sectional area, which is pi times 2.5 times 10 to the negative 4 whole thing squared. And that gives me a resistance of about 5.0 ohms when you do all that in your calculator. Okay, let's see how that compares to the resistance of the connecting wires. I'm going to take both the sections of the connecting wires together. The connecting wires are typically made of materials like copper or aluminum. So let's take copper over here which is Cu, and copper, as we discussed before, has a resistivity of 1.7 times 10 to the negative 8 ohm meter. 
So you see that its resistivity is a smaller number than the tungsten. Further, let's assume that in this circuit we need a length of wire of about one meter. That's more than three feet and that should be sufficient to connect this bulb to the battery. And let's assume that the diameter is one millimeter, which is typical for connecting wires. So the radius would be half a millimeter or 5.0 times 10 to the negative four meters. Okay, and we can do a resistance calculation for this, again, using rho L over A. I'm not gonna do the details of the calculation. You can check that for yourself. By the way, this rho L over A would just be rho L divided by pi times R squared. And when you do that, you find that the resistance of the wire, and I'm gonna go back here and change this to resistance of the bulb, be clear. And when you do this calculation, you will get a value of 2.2 times 10 to the negative two ohms which is only 0.02 ohms, which is much smaller than the 5 ohms we got for the bulb. Actually, if you do the ratio, the resistance of the bulb is about 230 times the resistance of the connecting wires. So our conclusion from doing this work is that the resistance of the bulb is much greater than resistance of the wire. This double greater than sign in math and physics tells you that it's not just greater than, but it's significantly greater, and in this case, about 230 times greater. So that gives us confidence that our assumption that connecting wires are ideal wires which have zero resistance is a fairly close one. The total resistance in the circuit is 5.02 ohms, of which 5.0 ohms is in the bulb and only 0 0.02 ohms is in the wires, so we can safely ignore those. All right, now let's talk about the power dissipated by the bulb. We discussed in the previous video that power of a resistor, bulb is a type of a resistor, is given by I times delta VR, the current through the resistor times the potential difference across it. And when we rearrange this using Ohm's law, we get two other forms like this, I squared R or delta V squared divided by R. Now, given the fact that the wire has a much smaller resistance than the bulb, we're going to assume that ideal wires have zero resistance, and then this delta VR simply becomes 6.0 volts. And if you do the actual calculations with the resistance of the wire and the bulb, you will see that this is very nearly true, and down to our two significant digits, we will get 6.0. So in this case, this form of the equation turns out to be the most helpful in calculating power since we know the potential difference and resistance. So let's go ahead and do that. This is 6.0 squared divided by 5.0, which gives me 7.2 watts. So this bulb puts out 7.2 joules of energy per second. And by the way, if I was interested in figuring out the current through the bulb, I can easily do that using Ohm's law. So the current through the bulb would be equal to the potential difference across the bulb divided by its resistance. And so that is 6.0 divided by 5.0, which is 1.2 amps. Now I'll just make a couple of other interesting points about how bulbs work. So in order to put out all this light, this tungsten filament gets pretty hot. The temperature of the filament is approximately 2200 degrees Celsius, which is about 2500 Kelvin and that's about 4,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So the filament of bulbs get really hot. In fact, this is about half as hot as the surface of the sun. Secondly, even though it puts out 7.2 joules of energy per second, most of that energy, it turns out, is being radiated in the infrared spectrum of light, which we perceive as heat. And it's only about one-tenth of this power that's put out in the visible part of the spectrum so the incandescent bulbs are not very efficient. And that's what has caused us to move towards fluorescent bulbs these days and more recently LED bulbs, which are a lot more efficient at giving us light without the associated waste of heat. In this slice of physics, we got some more practice working with resistance in a circuit. And in doing so, we saw a couple of important things. First, we tested our ideal wire assumption and found it to be pretty good in confirming that resistance of wires is much less than resistance of other resistors in the circuits like bulbs. 
Next, we calculated the power that's put out by these bulbs and realized that even though the filament gets very hot, about half the temperature of the surface of the sun, most of the energy put out is in the form of heat and doesn't help us see things. So these bulbs are not very efficient.